Hi there, I'm Tim Warner with CBT Nuggets. Welcome to this CBT Nuggets micro nugget entitled Microsoft Word 2010 Basic Text Formatting. We're going to get right into it here in the interest of time. I have Word 2010 fired up and we're going to create some boilerplate text here using an old function called RAND. We just supply two parameters. We supply the number of paragraphs and the number of lines per paragraph. Can't forget the equals to denote that this is a function. This gives us a bunch of boilerplate text, which is fine for our purposes because our purposes are to learn how to format text. I'm just going to make some arbitrary breaks here in the document, make some artificial level one headings as you see. I'll, I'll do one more paragraph. Okay, now how do we make changes? I hope you've seen my micro nugget on styles because quite honestly, if you're gonna be doing some heavy lifting in terms of wanting to format your level one, level two, level three headings particular way, to do your body text a certain way. Maybe you've got a call out here, you're doing some code, and you want to put that in a different font sort of in, and indent the text on the screen, you'll want to create styles for that because styles are collections of formats that can be applied with one click to selected text or paragraphs, you see. But if you're going to do it manually, here's what we've got going on. On the home tab, we have two ribbon groups, font and paragraph. Those are our main ones. And you'll see that we have a selection of what Microsoft feels are the most common tools in the font and paragraph arenas. If you want to see all the tools, we have these dialog box launchers here, these little arrow with a right angle. If you click the one for font, it brings the font dialog box up. If we bring paragraph, it brings paragraph up. So first, let's change this heading one to suit our needs. We can change the font being used very easily. We can boost the font. Instead of choosing a point size, I tend to use the increase and decrease buttons myself. You can customize to different case types, sentence case, toggle case, capitalize each word, which is convenient. That's really nice. This is clear formatting, which backs you off of everything. I'm going to undo that because I want to keep my formatting. Bold, italic, underline, strike through, superscript, subscript. You can add different effects if you want to. Boy, that's pretty hard on the eyes, quite honestly, but it's at least proving the point, right? And we can change the color with just a click of that. Of course, like I said, we can get to all those options and more, including including spacing between characters, stretching and scaling, some pretty hardcore desktop publishing stuff. It's pretty neat. Now you'll notice that my heading one is very close to the following paragraph. We can either add additional buffer space after our heading or we can put it before the body text heading. I'm going to choose the former option. To do basic paragraph formatting, you just place your cursor within the paragraph. By the way, a paragraph in Microsoft Word happens whenever you press enter or return on your keyboard. If you have your hidden formatting characters shown, which you always should if you're going to be a Word Power user, you can see that the paragraph mark denotes, in this case, I've created one paragraph here, I've created an empty paragraph, and then I've got a new paragraph between these two paragraph symbols. There's an implied paragraph symbol at the very beginning of the document, okay? Now, place our cursor in there. To address spacing, I tend to go right to the paragraph dialog box launcher. The only time, well, I do use these other commands come to think of it, but if you want spacing, indents, which are here, and then before after spacing, which are down below, you can change this from pixels to points in the preferences. I'm going to set this to, let's say, six points. You can type it right in. You don't necessarily need to use the spinner control. So that's gone into effect very easily. I can copy this formatting using the Format Painter tool by clicking it. See? If you want to use Format Painter more than once, double left click it and it stays on until you turn it off. Even more, I can save this as a style, which again bleeds over into what we've done in another micro nugget. So I'll leave that alone for now. Now, if we wanted this paragraph to be indented in a different font, etc., maybe it's a code sample, you have to select the text. You could get away theoretically with placing your cursor in it, but actually selecting the text is something I personally do. My original instructors in Microsoft Word so many years ago taught me a mantra. You have to select it to affect it. I'm going to change the font here to something very code-like, like Courier New, and I'm going to indent using the paragraph quick controls. See, we can easily indent or outdent by using these. Unfortunately, we can't get a right indent and a left indent simultaneously. We'll need to bring up the paragraph launcher, and it looks 
looks like we're 48 pixels left. Well, why don't I do 48 pixels right to bring in that text and set it off? We can add borders and shading. Why don't I throw outside borders on this? And as I said, we can do buffer space as well if we want to. I think this is just fine the way it is right now. Finally, if you're going to do bulleted lists, I'm just going to add this manually. You can place your cursor where you need and then choose either the bullet, which is unordered list, numbers, which is numeric, blah, 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 blah. When you're finished, hit enter and then enter again to turn off the listing. You also can have a pre-existing list like you see here. Make sure to select the elements in the list and then choose bullets or numbering. You'll notice that these drop down. There are several built-in styles, both for ordered and unordered lists. You can make that choice to your heart's content. And of course, Microsoft lets you customize that as well. Finally, for line spacing, you can go from the default of one to two to whatever. Again, it has to be selected. If you want to do a control A and affect the entire document and make it double space, you can. But quite honestly, as I've said, I rely very heavily on styles. And if I wanted my body text to be double space, I would simply modify the normal style as you see here, and that would instantly affect only normal based content in the document. So there you have it, the very basics of text formatting in Microsoft Word 2010. I hope that this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.